Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to the Fat CTO Dad Brunch mini series. This is a mini series that covers starting a company from basically just an idea to revenue. Today we're going to be talking about options for business entities uh, and what we chose for Dad Brunch. That's right, there's a couple of different options with pros and cons. Uh, some are costlier than others, some are cheaper than others, some have a little bit more legal oomph behind them. Uh, but Stefan, let's start with a sole proprietorship. Um, so a sole proprietorship is basically, you know, it's a single person who is responsible for the business. Um, it provides you no protections from, for example, being sued. You are completely liable for basically everything you do. Um, but it's the simplest to get started and allows you to sort of accept money right away. All right, Stefan, that was a good explanation. Uh, how about partnerships? So a partnership is uh, when you have multiple people involved. Um, you have a document which sort of spells out everybody's responsibilities, what their equity stakes are. Um, but there's also no liability protection. Right, so what that means is that if your company gets sued, it's the individuals and the partnerships that are getting sued, uh, as opposed to uh, more incorporated entities uh, that we'll talk about in a second, where there's that layer of protection between uh, you and the company. So is there anything out there that has protection from liability? That's a great question. Uh, there's something you hear about all the time which actually has that word in its name, which is an LLC, a limited liability company. And the way that that works is it's similar to a partnership, uh, but it has a little bit more legal oomph behind it. Uh, so it creates a, a layer of liability protection uh, between uh, somebody that might sue you and you personally. So there's that company in the middle. Uh, you hear a lot of contractors that uh, create an LLC just for themselves so that they're getting paid through that LLC rather than uh, directly for that same exact reason. Uh, so with an LLC, you could have either uh, you uh, by yourself um, uh, as a managing partner or you could have other people that are partners uh, with you. So on that same topic, uh, one level up from an LLC is a corporation. Uh, there's basically two types of corporations that we're gonna talk about, which is an S Corp and a C Corp. Uh, there are differences um, and we'll get into those differences uh, probably a little bit later, uh, but for the time being, an S Corp is a little bit simpler there are limits on how many investors you can have, and there are limits on what type of stock you could issue. A C Corp is a little bit more involved, uh, and when you actually go to raise money, if you go to raise money, uh, typically you're gonna have to convert your company to a C Corp. Uh, investors won't invest in an S Corp, especially uh, because of those limitations in stocks uh, that I just mentioned. So with that in mind, and considering our options, we decided for the Dad Brunch project, uh, to do a partnership uh, for a couple of reasons. Primarily, um, one is just the two of us. Um, we've known each other a long time. We do have, we trust each other to a degree. Right. He bought my tea. <laughs> um, but also there are uh, costs involved with everything you do. Um, you know, the sole proprietorship and partnerships are probably going to be your cheapest options on the outset. Um, <clears throat> whereas an LLC or a corporation require lawyers and filing fees uh, which can make your sort of startup costs uh, balloon relatively quickly. Um, so we decided to you know, start with a partnership and if as things progress and grow, we'll you know, transition later to an uh, entity that better uh, suits our needs. So it's important to know that uh, it is possible to change uh, how your company is structured fairly easily, especially if you're a startup. So you could change from an S Corp to a C Corp or from an LLC to a corporation. Uh, there is a little bit of a legal work involved and a little bit of a fee, uh, but don't overthink it uh, in the beginning. Uh, so to use a couple of examples, I formally uh, registered an LLC in Massachusetts, having uh, lived in Massachusetts, and that cost $500 to do, uh, plus a uh, registration fee with the city of Boston. If, for example, I registered that LLC in Delaware, uh, you have to pay in Delaware and file for a foreign um, entity in Massachusetts, plus another registration fee. Um, and all of that starts adding up. Uh, so you have to think about those costs. Uh, when you do uh, an S Corp, for example, uh, with all the legal work involved and the articles of incorporation and everything, uh, that costs about $5,500 uh, all in. Um, and But thus far, our partnership has cost us $65 just to register with uh, the city of Boston. Um, whatever state that you live in, uh, you want to look into the fees involved uh, and remember that if you're doing it in Delaware, which uh, a lot of people do and we're not going to go into why that's good or bad, uh, you have to do a registered agent 
uh, as well, and that usually costs about $100 a year. And regardless of what you pick, uh, remember that there are typically tax implications and ongoing regulatory requirements that you have to file something every year uh, or sometimes even every quarter. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, as far as business entities, uh, please ask us questions in the comments. Uh, wherever you see this video, we'll try to answer them or contact us at fastcto.com. Uh, we'd like to thank Sugar Bowl in the Dorchester neighborhood of Boston for letting us film. <laughs> um, and yes, thank you guys for watching. Yeah, thank you. Uh, on the next video, we hope to talk about uh, opening a bank account uh, and all the steps that go into that and considerations and fees that you have to watch out for. Uh, all good things. Thank you. Previously, create an LLC uh, in Massachusetts.